All right, so let's move on to our next equation here, and that's the range equation. Uh, the range equation applies to projectiles that um, they they take off and land at exactly the same um, height. For example, this is the ground right here, and that's an initial velocity. It goes up and then comes back down. Yeah. Not very good. Comes back down at exactly the same height or, or, or the same level. And what the range tells us is how far down range. That's our range right there. How far down range will it go? If you know the initial velocity and if you know theta. Okay, we can see here that it's proportional to the square of the initial velocity, it's directly proportional to the initial velocity squared, and we, we can say that it's inversely proportional to gravity. So that means as gravity increases, or if gravity, the acceleration of gravity were to get greater, you'd have less range. Like if you went to a planet where gravity was greater, then you'd have less range. If you went to a planet like say, or a, um, a moon, like the moon, where gravity is one sixth of ours, that means you should be able to kick or throw something six times further than you would here on Earth. So that's the range equation. That, that if you long, as long as you know the initial velocity and the angle right here, theta, at which it is launched, it will return the range, or that is the distance in the x direction, um, as long as we assume that, that object stays at the same height. It, it, it goes up and comes back down and lands at exactly the same height. That's the range equation. Um, Here's a great Angry Birds um, application. If you want to find the maximum range, well, the maximum range occurs when the sine of 2 theta is a maximum. That is when um, the angle, uh, if we double the angle, um, it, it, the sine of that equals 1. And, and we all know, I think we all kind of know in our heads, that that angle is 45. 45 degrees. If you have uh, an, a, an angle lower than 45, like for example right here, 30 degrees. In fact, I should write that in purple because it's purple. Um, there we go. Okay, so that's less than 45 degrees. It's not going to get very high and it won't, it doesn't have enough, um, you might say, lift under it or air under it to get down range very far. Similarly, if we have too high of an angle, like this guy right here, that's way greater than 45 degrees. You're going to get a lot of height, but there's not a whole lot of an X component to get it down range, and so it's going to come down um, uh, short of uh, the the short of well, what am I trying to say here? The maximum range you could possibly get. But 45 degrees, this guy right in the middle, this has basically the same x component and the same y component. And so it'll give you the maximum um, height to distance ratio. It'll basically give you the maximum range. Range max occurs at 45 degrees. One thing that should be pointed out though here is, um, I'm not sure if you can, uh, if you can still read this, I'll change back to black, is that complementary launch angles give you the same range. Again, this is assuming we're talking about the same level. You, you go up and come back down at the same, the same level. But what we mean by complementary is that they add up to um, 90 degrees. So this right, right here, this is actually 30 degrees, right? And this big one right here, this is 60 degrees, they're, well, we can say they're complementary. They're 30 degrees is the same distance off the x-axis as 60 degrees is off the y-axis right here. What they will do is they give you the same range. You can see that um, the 30 goes up at kind of a, um, you know, kind of a weak angle and comes back down right here. And uh, 60 goes up at a really sharp angle but comes back down at exactly the same point. They will return you the same range. Um, whereas 45 degrees will give you the um, 
uh, it'll give you the maximum range. And these angles here apply to any complementary or all complementary angles. Complementary. Complementary angles. <clears throat> so an angle of one degree, okay, really, really weak will get you like right there, not very far. Well, the complementary angle of one degree is 89 degrees. And so that object would shoot straight way up in the air and come basically right back down. Sorry, that wasn't drawn very well. Uh, come straight back down and land exactly where the one degree um, angle was. And this is true of all other complementary angles as well. So if the two angles can add up to 90 degrees, they're complementary and have the same range. This next slide right here is not, we're not going to worry about it too much, but it points out that um, it's a good thing that we in class assume no air resistance. Because once you start dealing with air resistance, your range kind of gets messed up a little bit. Range equation is valid only when you're not dealing with air resistance. Air resistance resists or kind of acts against the direction of the motion of the, uh, the projectile, and it kind of cuts its range a little bit short. So that um, it's kind of interesting here, if you want to maximize your range in real life with, um, with air resistance, your range is actually about 35 degrees, uh, which will give you the maximum range right here. And that's because air resistance works against your direction of motion and makes your, um, your projectiles kind of fall short a little bit. I believe Angry Birds is set up such that there is no air resistance and that's why I think that 45 degrees generally gives us the, the greatest range. So um, we talked about our trajectory equation, our range equation, and now we have a max height equation. <clears throat> and what this does, this tells us the highest point of this uh, um, of a projectile uh, given the initial velocity and theta. So if we know the initial velocity and we know theta right here, it'll return the highest y displacement, or that is the highest point, or we call it the max height. And this comes from an equation that we're, we should be used to seeing. This is an old kinematics equation. Um, v final squared is V initial squared minus 2 times the acceleration, which in our case is G, times the displacement. Okay, well, the assum this, based this is based off the assumption that at the highest point, if you throw an object all the way to its highest point in the air, at that highest point, that final velocity, that is zero in the y direction. We know that if you throw an object straight up for a brief second at the very highest point, it has no velocity in the y direction because it stops and then comes back down. So this is based off of the fact that we simply set that equal to zero. And, um, and we plug in everything else um, that we know, this delta y being our y max. And it ena enables us to solve for our y max. This is our max height equation right here. So delta y, that is our, our highest y displacement max, is our initial velocity, or you can write it as vo. We often write it as vi. Our initial velocity squared times the sine of theta squared. Again, this right here, don't you can't square the sine. You can square the sine of theta. So it's really the th sine of theta squared, that value squared, divided by 2 times the acceleration of gravity. That's our max height equation. And that should be on your equation sheet, um, but you may have an occasion to use it every now and then. Again, it's kind of a specialized equation that returns the, fin uh, the, the highest y position given an initial velocity and, a, um, uh, and an angle. So we'll finish up here with just some kind of characteristics of projectile motion. And assuming there's no air resistance, uh, we can say projectile motion has a certain symmetry to it. Um, assuming that it lands at the same height. Lands at the same height from which it took off. So here and here it's the same height. Okay. Um, and a couple things are true. First, first of all, the max height, this right here, occurs at one half time. Now this is T is time for the whole trajectory right there. Okay, well max height 
assuming no air resistance, that's one half time. So if you're doing any equations and you're you're assuming a, a nice parabolic uh, projectile motion um, path, if you know the whole time, you can say, okay, well, max height occurs at one half time. Uh, another inter interesting thing about projectile motion is that at equal heights, um, or I'm sorry, it's at equal heights at one half time plus or t minus t. What that means is if we start right here and uh, let's say we go backwards one second in time and forwards one second in time, that object is going to be at equal heights. <clears throat> okay, if we go back um, backwards two seconds in time and forwards two seconds in time from the max height, it's going to be at equal heights. So there's a certain symmetry to it. Uh, what's also true is that the velocity is equal at equal heights. Uh, I'm going to write it in a different color so you can see it. I'm going to make these velocity arrows blue. But we can see right here that this velocity and this velocity right here are equal um, at equal heights. Now, these lines right here, the absolute value, that means well, it's not the same velocity because uh, one is positive, one is negative, but the absolute value, or you might see the magnitude of the velocity is equal at those two heights. And that's true of any two heights. So if we look at the initial velocity right here, the whole initial velocity, the whole trajectory, and it goes up and comes back down, we can say that's going to be equal to the final velocity uh, when it hits the ground. So if you throw something with your hand, you throw it up and it leaves your hand with a certain velocity, it'll, it'll go up in the air, it'll stop right here at half time and come right back down and it will hit your hand with the same velocity that it left your hand. That's what we're saying here and here and is also true of any other two heights that are equal, um, on whether you're talking about the going up side or the coming back down side. Um, this is kind of a, a reiteration of what I just said. Velocity is uh, equal at equal heights. And um, the last little thing about uh, the symmetry of projectile motion is that the angle um, above the horizontal is going to be the same uh, below the horizontal on the other side. Here's what I mean. And I'll, uh, I'll highlight this in the, I'll go with like an orange. Okay. So this angle right here, this theta above the horizontal this velocity has some angle right there. That's kind of messy. That angle. All right. Um, if we go to the exact same height directly across from there, not only is the velocity going to be the same but in the negative direction, but that angle is going to be the exact same angle just below the horizontal. Okay. So again, there's a certain symmetry to projectile motion, assuming that we're talking about no air resistance. So these are all things that can help you uh, solve problems and, and find patterns. You can certainly do it the long way. We know plenty of equations to do it the long way, but hopefully these equations and this uh, little kind of symmetry lesson here on projectile motion can help us see patterns and identify um, truths about projectile motion that will help us make problems a little bit shorter. So uh, that's it for this part equations and symmetry of projectile motion and um, look forward to working on you uh, working on these problems with you in class I'll see you then